And we come now to the final presentation of this series, wonderful series on marriage. And we have spoken much of the reverence and the mutuality and the knowledge in the Hebrew scriptures and sometimes referred to in the Christian scriptures about knowing. Mary said to the angel, I, how can I have a child? I don't, I don't know man. <clears throat> knowing re referred to sexual intimacy. To know someone is to as we saw in the last presentation, is to penetrate to their deepest identity. So to know someone intellectually and emotionally is really a beautiful thing. And to let yourself be known. <clears throat> um, this is how I need to be loved. Can, can my partner, uh, my marriage um, sacramental, guide, <coughs> excuse me, take me there, in, take me to know myself more. See, that's what it is to create. Can I help you know uh, awareness, you see? Marriage is about awareness. Uh, but an awareness isn't say, oh, now I know you. No, it's can I help you know you and can I help you accept what you know? Which is more difficult, awareness or acceptance about what you really are, who you really are. That's so difficult. But the object of acceptance, the basis of generosity is gratitude, acceptance. And, and, and what marriage sacramentalizes is God's love for us, asking us to accept God's creation of us, and then do something with it beyond your partner, that you, you love your partner so that your partner can love beyond you. Love your children, their friends, your friends, to be more loving, and not just loving emotionally, but loving in doing. You're not just married to create each other, it's to create each other, to be a creator for others. Oh, beautiful. What a beautiful way to live. So love is a revelation of the love that begot us all and to whom we will return. God so loved the world that God didn't send an idea. I didn't send a, a thought. And in, in loving, we, we, don't, we are explicit. We don't say, I'm thinking about her. I, I am imagining him. Oh, that's very nice. That's very good. And so there is this saying things and doing things. And so this last presentation is about the five love languages. But there is only one love language, and that is the love that God has for you. Whether you recognize that or not, your longing will tell you that you love God. If you love the experience of being loved, then you love God without knowing it, without wanting to know it, that you are known. Isn't it a wonderful thing to be known by another? So that the love languages, the five love languages, I mean, I know five important areas about you, and I am good at revealing one of those. I will, I will reveal all five, but one is <clears throat> one that I know you are really uh, available to. And they're, they're very good, and I won't, I won't go through them, but, but they're, they're, you know, as I said, God so loved the world that he sent himself, the God self, in form 
of a human being. I come to you because you get come to best by human beings, not just by ideas, not just by pictures and images. I send you a, a word, a gesture, a gift, a surprise, all of the love languages uh, express. They are, they are explicitations, explicit, um, doing it. And so, as I said, acceptance begets generosity, donation based on gratitude. And so what you do in loving each other is to help each other be grateful for a self that each of us finds very difficult to be grateful for ourselves. We have faults. We have uh, interior doubts and fears. We're not perfect. It's very hard to love the imperfect. We love the whole. We love the perfect. We love the full. We, we don't like the vacuum. But human beings have a loneliness inside them. And so God comes to us all through the history of Israel and Christianity. God came to Israel in covenants and prophets and kings and manna in the desert and water from the rock and the exodus from Israel. All gestures. And Jesus walked around healing the blind, the deaf, feeding, teaching, touching. Jesus lived the five love languages. And so, so do we. We love to be human. We love to be explicit. But it t will this be good enough? No, no gift, no word, no touching will ever be good enough. It'll be good, but perfect, completing forever? No. And so there is a poverty in every expression, every, every one of the five love languages. We, we love that and we love to talk about it. You know, I, I, I love to hear nice, gentle words. I love to be surprised. I didn't know I was known so. That's what these five love languages are. You know me better than I know myself, perhaps. You know that I need physical touches, and I didn't know that. I like them, but I didn't know that they were my most dearest expression. Or spending quality time. What's the difference between spending quality time and wasting time? God did not come as a human being to waste time and ask us to take time as a sacrament to be received and to share it. The love that married people have is for me, but not for me. You don't love me. And then I, I keep that to myself. No, I'm always for distribution. And I want you to be for distribution. So I find out by watching, by listening, what, what really is a way I can express the limited, I'd like it to be infinite, of course, but the limited way that you need to be loved for this moment. We can't have intimate conversation all the time. I can't keep touching you, though it's Nice to touch you, perhaps. I might not like to be touched, but you do, so I come to you according to you. There's, a, there's an old Latin philosophical phrase that whatever is received is received according to the ability of the receiver to receive. I find out, how do you receive best? And I will come telling you words, gestures, I will come to you showing you that I know you and I love you insofar as I know you. But my love for you is not so that you return love for me, though I would like to, for you to come to me according to me, but it's for that we can be blessings. Imagine, blessings, that we keep God's grace going 
in everything we do. Everybody has a love language. The neighbor, the stranger, the injured person. And you are the part, you are the love language that God is speaking to them because somebody spoke the love language to you. The object of marriage is service.